Hi guys, good morning. Let me know that you can hear me okay. Grand Rising to you. Blessings to you and your families. Thank you for everyone who's liked the video. Thank you for being here with me this morning. Let me know that you can hear me okay, that it's loud enough for you. And then I'll begin. I'm just going to start shuffling the cards in the meantime. Is it loud enough for you guys? It's a little low, thank you. How about now? Is the volume better? Let me know. Before we begin, we can get it all situated out. Aloha. Nirupama, love to you, my Indian soul sister, Jada, good morning, Erica, grand rising, Rip, peace and love to you, hearts to you too, hola, grand rising, Jenna, how you doing, Fasho, thank you for being here, Lotus Flower Bomb, good morning, Erica. Divine Figure, Brad G. How's the volume now, guys? Let me know. Great. Good morning, Finev. And everyone who's just watching and not participating in the chat, Grand Rising to you. I hope you're healthy. Everyone, I hope your families are doing well. Oh, of course I remember. Of course I remember. Oh. Hey, tea leaves, how you doing? Peace to you, Violet Flame. Good morning, Tess. Grand rising, love. Goddess, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the air that we breathe, the clean water we have to drink. Thank you so much for our families, for our soul families, for our ancestors. Bless this reading today. Bless and encourage all those who watch this reading, including those in the future. We pray for the ancestors we pray for those who are crossing over and becoming ancestors. We pray for peace, wealth, and prosperity for all. Amin Ashe. Hi, Sasha. Good morning, Maria. Hello, Bruna. Grand Rising Dees. Okay, let's see what comes out. I'll do a little collective reading and then you guys can tell me what you're going through, what's going on with you, and we can read on that as well if you'd like. This is karma yoga for me, so I ask that you don't do super chats. I appreciate you, though, for the consideration, but this is my gift to you. Hey, Arang, 
How are you? Good morning. Good morning, pretty. Thank you everyone who's liking the video. You help to support the channel. You help to support the channel and the algorithm when you do so. And so since you're pouring abundance into me, I pray that it's returned tenfold to you. Okay, so they're asking me to talk to you about the current astrology first. So there's a lot going on, you know, with this month. It's going to be astrologically, at least, one of the most intense months of the year. I think it's no coincidence. It's the very end of the year. It's a very auspicious time. Uh, there's a lot, a significant amount of 12th house energy happening in the month of December. So there's going to be a lot of memory recall. There's going to be a lot coming up from the subconscious into the collective consciousness. It will affect you at an individual level as well as a collective level. And you may find that some deep wounding is exposed for you at this time. You may also experience it in those whom are around you. You could find that you recall memories from your childhood of things that you didn't know had happened to you, things which you had completely forgotten. As well, the veil is very thin at this time, even more thinner than it is around the time of Halloween. So you could have a lot of contact with ancestors, with your spiritual team, God herself as well. You may find that this can be a time of purging for you, of extreme detoxification at a physical level, but most importantly at an emotional level. Most of it will affect your emotions and your relationships, but there's going to be massive changes. So the best way to know is to study your chart personally. And then you'll know for sure. Good morning, Siswe. Thank you so much for your love, everyone. I appreciate you. I appreciate your place in my life. I pray for you guys. Okay. Let's begin. Are some of you guys, um, some of you are dealing with control issues, whether it be you or something around you. Others of you are dealing with finances. Let's see. Aries may be important to you guys. Leo may be important to you guys. Pisces, especially uh, undeveloped Pisces. So this would be Pisces at its lower level. Cancers may be relevant to you guys as well. People who have uh, Earth and their rising could be relevant to you guys. Aquariuses and Capricorns as well. That's all I'm seeing. A lot of you are looking forward to the new year and new beginnings. Some of you are getting ready to do some type of important travel. A lot of you are feeling stuck and wishing you could move. So some of you are on lockdown, of course. Others of you are planning something. Or at the very least, if you don't know it yet, there's going to be some important travel coming up. Also, some of you are going to have some revelations brought to you. What you thought was friendship is going to unfold. 
into something deeper. There's a friend or an association around you. For some of you, it's professional. For others of you, it's just someone that you only view as, you know, platonic, I suppose. But there's getting ready to be some type of communication or admitteds there about feelings. For half of you, it will be someone coming saying, I don't want to be your friend anymore. I would like to develop something more deeper with you. For the other half of you, it will actually be a friend who's seeking to bring some type of clarity, reconciliation, a fresh brand new start to a situation. But there's a lot of hesitancy here because someone is expecting to be shut down, like they're expecting to be told off or denied. And then for others of you, they're blocked. So they're trying to find new and ingenious ways to speak with you. Some of them are going as far as to create a new account or to get burner phone numbers uh, in order to contact you because their accounts or their phone numbers have been blocked. With the Knight of Wands, you should expect this probably by the end of the week as far as timing goes. Yeah, this has been a long time coming. Uh, someone doesn't understand, so they're trying to think of many ways that they can uh, be opportunistic in their approach to you. If any of you don't have a good relationship with your father, or if any of you are experiencing pregnancies or something going on where the father or your spouse is not as active as they should be, uh, there's getting ready to be some type of communication from this person. Potentially an apology, wanting to heal and reconcile a family. But uh, they're expecting to be a shot down. Someone as well with judgment and the chariot could be trying to avoid court proceedings. So they may want to try to work out a deal with you first. Maybe if some of you are going to put someone on child support or something like that. Okay, good morning, Kim. I'm sorry to hear about your financial issues. I pray for your abundance and increase. Good morning, Alan. How are you? What time is it in Uganda, beautiful? <laughs> I'm so happy you guys are here with me because you guys are from all over the world. So no matter what time it is, I love you very much. Good morning, Lunar Angel. There are fresh new starts coming, but a lot of it has to do with old situations which are going to have new life brought into them. But ultimately, the choice is yours because with the Four of Pentacles, it deals with free will. So will you move forward compassionately to a brand new beginning with something that's coming back up for resurrection, for a fresh brand new start? You have to decide however this resonates with you because it's coming in quickly. Yeah, someone's been thinking pretty intently because they've been uh, thinking about what's wrong, what's incorrect, overanalyzing things, and it's caused stagnation or a pause. Now, for those of you who are dealing with the finances, you're going to get what you expect. We always tend to get what we expect. So know that your current situation, it's not a reflection of your desires. Your current situation is always a reflection of your cognition. So what you really believe subconsciously, internally, is what's going to manifest. You can have the desires to fix things, to increase your abundance, but if your desire and your cognition is out of sync, then you're only going to manifest what it is that you truly believe. So if you want to increase your abundance, especially with this night here, I would recommend you look into various subliminals, um, affirmations, things that you can do on a consistent repetitive basis so that you can shift those subconscious beliefs and begin to attract more abundance into your life. Now, for those of you who are going to be receiving this communication, this person, it's taken them a lot of confidence and courage in order to communicate with you. 
I don't think that they are going to take accountability for whatever happened that's causing the judgment to come out because the judgment here is bringing back something that is is dead and gone reviving it it's the energy of Lazarus but with the seven of swords with the four of pentacles there's a lack of accountability here there is an unwillingness for for one to uh, self-realize so with the hanged man because they're not wanting to take accountability and realize they're overthinking about how they can approach you from a different perspective one that doesn't require rehashing of whatever happened in the past as well as hmm one that uh, a way of communicating that wouldn't necessarily require apologies so that may be a bit of an issue because someone wants to reconcile without taking accountability okay hey cassidy how are you cassidy you're a moderator i think for my favorite reader Aren't you a moderator for Olivia Love? Guys, check out Olivia's channel. She's my favorite. She's so amazing. She has no idea who I am, but <laughs> I love her. <laughs> hey, Princess Funk, how you doing, Tania? We're doing a general reading currently to see what's coming out. If you would like to know what it's about so that we don't stop the reading, you can rewind. Back to the beginning, and then you can have a good idea of where we're at. Good morning, Sayuri. So this Cancer energy is coming out pretty strong, as well as this lower vibrating Pisces. The Earth sign rising is confirmed, as well as the Leo energy. So there's multiple people here in this situation. So now that we have a general idea of what it's about, for some of you, someone wants to tell you that they don't want to be your friend anymore and they love you. For others of you, it's about increasing your finances. And then for others of you, it's a friend who wants to uh, reconcile the friendship. So I'm going to shuffle into each king and see what they have to say. Okay, the king that's operating in the fire energy, regardless of if they're a fire sign or they have strong fire placements in their chart or not, this king is wanting to um, bring some type of, of healing to a situation. For me as a reader, the king of wands is always a, a husband, a committed relationship. Someone feels like uh, you got away. For those of you who are resonating with this part of the reading, you're the one that got away. It was a mistake, whatever decision or choice that they made. They're also receiving a significant amount of karma for it as well. So some things have happened in their life which has caused them to get off balance. And they're seeing that you're the missing piece in the situation. So they're going to be coming back to reconcile with you. Yeah, they're going to write you a significant, it's, it's, it's a long communication. So if it's a text message, it's going to be like four pages long. Could be a direct message, an email. It's some type of electronic communication. And they're going to tell you that they're willing to put in the work to fix it. That they're going to tell you that they'll do whatever it takes to make the situation right. This could be a male or female, this King of Wands energy, so don't limit that to the gender. Okay. They're going to be very helpful, very generous, 
They're going to come bearing gifts if you agree to communicate with them. Yeah, so that's the communication coming in. Someone is really afraid of losing something. They're afraid that it's too late. They want to solve whatever this Five of Swords was. Feels like it has a lot to do with family. Hmm. A desire to bring a family back together. The sun and strength popped out in the shuffle. So this is very strong Leo energy. Okay. Also, the strength is an undeveloped Virgo as well. So Virgo could be significant. Now let's see what the King of Cups wants to say. Aloha, Auntie Barba. How are you? Aloha, Donnie. Yeah, a lot of people are telling me I've been popping up in their dreams. So we're doing a lot of inner work on the 5D, aren't we? You know I don't really subscribe to that 5D, 7D stuff, but I know you guys do, so I respect you. For me, it's just, it's all the same. Because <laughs> the separation is an illusion, you know? <laughs> You're funny, Tania. <laughs> hey, Captain. <laughs> I hope I said it right. <laughs> Now, the King of Cups, this is a very brand new situation. Okay, this has to do with you guys who are dealing with the finances. So, the cards acknowledge those of you who are dealing with the financial troubles that you are doing your best. And they're encouraging you not to give up. They're encouraging visual visualization as well because that's what's going to help you to manifest. They're encouraging your resilience and your strength because this isn't going to last forever. Very uh, shocking in the moment, but I believe you can think your way or strategize your way out of this. For some of you, it's a clear sign that you need to move on from whatever it is that you do, maybe it's time to start your own business with the Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles also talks about diversifying one's income, multiple streams of income. And then for others of you, the world will represent the current energies involving the pandemic and that that's what's going on with the finances. So the devil here with the six of cups talks about those gifts and strengths that you were born with. The devil here is not negatively aspected. It's dealing with time, karma, and Saturn's energy as it pertains to that. So your natural gifts and abilities, if you strategize in a way that allows you to implement your natural gifts and abilities, you will create new opportunities for yourself. Okay? Guys, remind me to show you the, uh, the brand of colloidal silver that I use because some of you are um, not feeling good. I'm hoping that it's not, you know, what's going around and that it's just a little cold. But I want to show you the brand of uh, colloidal silver that I use. It really is life-saving. And uh, one of the dear subscribers and her husband, they sent me a whole case of it. And it really, really healed me in ways that I can't explain. So I'm going to give them a shout out before the end of the reading so you guys can order from them and uh, it will help you okay what else about the finances
So what you guys are going through financially, you may be having to rely on the on the benevolence or help of others around you, but this is not going to last forever. It's very temporary energy with the three of swords, and it's also very mental, but there will be some type of healing that's happening in this situation, and you will overcome it, but what's important is that you guard your mental health and you don't overthink things. Don't allow yourself to overthink so much that you get stuck into some type of stagnancy it's also important that you don't allow um, conflict or the fear of things to make you maybe vice drink um, whatever your, your vices are that help you to cope that's not going to serve you at this time mastering your mental body is what's going to serve you because i do feel like there are options available to you if you can get out of the five of wands hanged man three of swords energy there is something for you guys you have gifts abilities there are also opportunities that will be coming towards you but you must be in a vibration to receive those opportunities so being in the vibration of the three of swords is not going to bring the sun's energy to you so some of you have excellent creative abilities something some type of natural inherent gift and this is presenting you with the perfect opportunity to develop that and expand that for yourself. Some of you have children, your parents, and you're very concerned about being able to provide. But with the Ten of Cups, I promise you it's going to work out. Others of you with the Empress and Sun may be moving in. Um, or moving back home with your parents or grandparents. There's no shame in that. So please be kind to yourself. Yeah, opportunities are coming, but the opportunities are born from you. They come from your ingenuity, your brilliance. There's not going to come to you from someone else. So you're going to have to create these for yourself. Now, some of you are worried about a significant elder. So that came out randomly. I'm just going to shuffle into that. <laughs> Sorry guys, I haven't been on here in a while. <laughs> My cards are like you you waited too long to come read for them. <laughs> okay. What about this elder? What about this elder? Okay, so this elder maybe recently like within the last couple of days to the last two weeks at the most has transitioned yeah you have a lot of um for those of you who have recently lost a loved one there because the veil is so thin right now there's going to be some type of communication with the ace of swords you may be wondering if you're really hearing or seeing what's been happening but with the eight oh with the Ace of Swords and uh, the world that talks about the dream state. So many of you may be having dreams about a particular loved one or a friend who recently passed away, or as well with uh, the Hermit in the Wheel of Fortune, it could be an, an upcoming or a recently passed anniversary of someone who has transitioned. They are communicating with you, you're not imagining it. That's all that they want to say. And they're also helping you and helping the family. So don't be defensive to whatever is happening around you. A lot of you are finding coins everywhere. Like uh, you're not sure where all of the coins are coming from, but you're going to clean up your homes and there are coins all over the floor. Some of you are also finding um feathers and things like that yeah how you doing dad king good to see you hi hi jayman 
Okay. So let's see what's going on there. Hey, sugar. <laughs> okay, they're telling me to tell you guys I've had a lot of work to do. Ten of Wands, that it's been really tough on me doing everything by myself. Guys, it's not about me, ancestors. <laughs> Please, let's talk to the people. <laughs> okay. Wow. Asheros Quartz. Okay, so um, there's something going on here with a vice with moon and the devil. I didn't need those to come out to see it because it's very apparent here with this three of cups and page of cups. With the way that uh, the cards describe it to me, it has something to do with pills. It could be opioids or something else. But there's something going on here as well with lack of sleep. So if you guys are concerned about any of your family and, and their mental health, a lot of what's going on with them has to do with the substance that they're taking. And then with these two cards, they need to detox or let go of whatever the substance is. And then the mind heals. The mental health, um, re it, it's like a rejuvenation, regeneration kind of energy. Yeah, Lotus Flower Bomb. I got so many emails. <laughs> Um, people were like, are you alive? Are you okay? I'm like, I am, I promise. <laughs> yeah, there needs to be some type of intervention type of energy. And this here is also a needle. So that has a lot to do with what's going on with the mental health. And why, why is one... Um, dealing with the addiction or substance abuse because of something that happened in the childhood, okay? There could be uh, some type of issue of abandonment or neglect that's being triggered. Listen, you guys, you need to check on your happy friends. The, the rate of suicide is going to increase, unfortunately, according to what these cards said. So I'm not predicting that for any of your family. That's just a general message. So I don't want to encourage fear or to frighten you. They'll tell me if it's a particular message for someone, and it's not. It's just general. So make sure that you're taking care of uh, yourself. Make sure that... Um, You're checking on your loved ones as well. Let's see what the King of Pentacles has to say. And then after this, you guys can tell me what topic you'd like me to read on for you. Or how you want to do the rest of the reading and I'll be happy to do that for you. Whoever this King of Pentacles energy is, they talk to themselves a lot. Like full-blown conversations with themselves. <laughs> okay, that's random, but maybe that'll help you to know who it is. Very intelligent person, someone who uses their logic to justify things. Not a very emotional individual. Someone who has an explanation for things always. Always based in logic and technicalities. Very rarely is it based in emotions. Also, this person could have been ignoring you for a significant amount of time. With the full, could be anywhere from three to six months that they've been ignoring you. And this would be something where uh, there was some type of a rift in a friendship or could be a romantic connection. With the full, I'm really picking up friendship. Could also be a relationship between a child and a parent. 
as well as as an, a child and an aunt and uncle, regardless of, of the age. Because, you know, even though we are adults, we're all somebody's child, you know. So there's always an elder who views us in that youthful energy. But there's um, issues here of ignoring someone or ignoring ignoring whatever this five of swords issue was it could have been that there was a situation where this king of pentacles or or it doesn't matter i'll read generally because it can go both ways there was a situation here where someone communicated something very important and i think whatever they communicated it wasn't met with compassion or, or understanding this is also the energy of being bombed with messages, being bombed with information. So let's say uh, someone communicated to a friend that they have a lot going on in their personal life. That friend may have completely ignored what that person said and just started to like constantly send them messages about stuff that was irrelevant to whatever was spoken about. And so someone may have cut that friend off as a result. This is cutting people out of your life. This is uh, deleting your social media so as not to have contact with someone. This is blocking someone as well. So now this gets ready to come back. So the energy of, of this reading is judgment. Lots of stuff coming back. Be it ancestors making communication, old people wanting to reconcile and heal situations. What's important for you guys to know, if you resonate with this King of Pentacles energy, this person is wanting to speak with you or heal with you because they need you. So it's not so much because they value the connection, okay? They're, they make it seem like they value the connection, but they really are trying to get something out of you. They can't bring harvest to this crop without your input. So be careful that you're not being used or, or manipulated or someone is not wanting to reconnect with you in order to use your good name in order to build themselves up. Okay, yeah. They're like truth, facts. The ancestors with the page of swords are like facts. <laughs> Aloha, Main Rahim. How you doing? Good to see you here. Yes, because something has recently happened in this person's life and they feel that they can't overcome this without your energy. Virgo could be very significant in this. Nine of Cups could be Pisces. Leo could also be significant as well. Someone's just trying to come back and, and be like, oh, it wasn't that serious. They may make a small apology, but they'll their plan is to do whatever it takes to shift the situation around. But the ancestors are saying you need to leave this person in the past because they come with manipulation, they come with uh, purposeful pursuits as well. And then uh, whoever, someone's solar return could be up upcoming, fast approaching, or the fallout happened around someone's birthday. So the birthday is significant here with the world and devil. Yeah, overthinking, judgment, they, they need your help to get out of a situation that they cannot get out of on their own. So your ancestors give you the warning to be very careful, to be very discerning, especially with all of the 12th house energy that's happening in the month of December. Okay. You know, Kim, I always say if you have to disengage from a parent, it's pretty serious. Because it, it's your parent, you know? So. Not judging, just acknowledging that. I'm glad the reading is resonating. Okay. What is going on with these dreams? Talking a lot about their dreams, which also is 12th house energy. So that makes sense with this December astrological vibe that's going on. On December 21st, 
I need you guys to fast and pray if possible. That is the great conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn. Hasn't happened since like 1200 and something, 1223. It's, it's, or actually it's the closest it's been since 1223, but the last time it happened was in the year 2000. And that also, and it's no coincidence, this is the first time it's, I believe, in an air sign when it's been in um, earth signs. But don't hold me to that. I, I study so much every month that I don't always remember the details. But I'm pretty sure I'm right, but you can do your own research. Um, and it's no coincidence that it's happening on the day of the winter solstice. This is a wonderful time for you guys to fast, to manifest, to pray. But it's also going to be a day when karma is returning tenfold. So if you've done harm to people, it's getting ready to come back. And if you've been doing good, it's getting ready to come back. And the results of your life are going to let you know how you've been doing. Okay? Okay, for some of you, what's going on in the dream state is physiological. You could be eating too late before bed. You could also be... Um, taking in some type of media that is affecting the dream state as well. It would be very good if you if you create some type of ritual before bedtime that is very meditative and peaceful. And then for those of you who are seeing me in your dreams, we actually are meeting up. And somehow I'm offering some type of protection to you. Okay. I don't know, am I blocking the night creatures from you guys? <laughs> you know when people get like frozen in their sleep? <laughs> I've heard of that happening. That's never happened to me, but I've heard of it happening to other people. A lot of you are severely dehydrated. Seven of Cups, Judgment Tower, Temperance. You need to increase your water intake. And then you need to create some type of meditative ritual before bed that allows you to calm down and be peaceful. You can't eat before you go to sleep either. Yeah, that's my energy there. Okay. Um, I would recommend if you want to study it for yourself that you type it into Google or into your favorite search engine and then go to what you're attracted to because I could tell you where to go, right? But the things that I'm attracted to have to do with my alignment and my vibration. You could be vibrating from a higher place than me. You could be vibrating a little bit lower than me. So it's best for you to do the research and then go towards that which, is, which attracts you because that which attracts you is exactly what's for you. So just type it into Google, type in the great conjunction and you're gonna get a lot of information uh, from astrological websites as well as astronomy websites because this is one of the um this is one of the planetary events that both astronomers and astrologers recognize and then i'm thinking about uh doing a, a video on the on the significance of it and the different ways that you can maximize the energy if it interests you So let's look into the 21st. So sorry to hear that, Ola. Did we read about that in a previous reading? Hey, Melon T, how are you? So what do you have to say about the Jupiter Saturn conjunction on the winter solstice and that energy. Mm. 
Okay, so here's the energy of it. Yeah, that karma, like I told you guys. It's balancing because it brings in the new age. So I am one of the rare astrologers who does not believe that we are in the age of Aquarius yet. I believe that we're still transitioning between the Piscean and Aquarian energies. Um, I believe we're in a very in, a, in an important state of transition, and I believe within the next few years, especially after the United States goes through its Pluto return in 2024, I believe between 2024 and 2030, we're going to actually enter into the age of Aquarius. That comes from my personal studies. Many may not agree, but that is how I see it. So we're in this pivotal transitional phase right now. And for those of you who have gone through childbirth, you always know that right before the baby emerges, when the child is crowning, if it's a traditional birth or or uh, right before the doctor pulls the baby out, if it's a cesarean, that is always the most chaotic and most pivotal time of the birthing process. And that process is very reflective of the cycles of nature. So a lot of what's going on, a lot of what's going to develop in 2021, and it's going to begin to climax and build up to 2024, is very similar to that energy. That's, you know, right when the baby is about to come, that's when you have to bear down and push the hardest. That's when it's the most intense and the most chaotic. And that can be a, an allegory or very symbolic of the energies that we're currently going through at a worldwide collective level. So things have to get balanced out, right? You have to clean up the house or put it this way. You have to sweep the floor before you can mop it. You know, before it's all fresh and clean, you have to get all of the all of the old dirt out. You know, you have to go into the crevices and wipe all the dust down, you know, and this is very, um, very much so a good example of or a parable, whatever you want to call it, of what this energy that we're currently in is like. A lot of you are going to feel that there has been a release. There's also going to be good news around finances and stability for you because of this release. A lot of you are going to have to make decisions. Are you going to continue on with certain? Most of this is going to affect relationships, okay? So you're going to have to make a decision. Are you going to continue on? Or are you going to make the decision to let things go? Because in some situations, it's time to move on because you're moving into like, it's the energy of like a new dimension. And so some of the things which you were previously aligned with are no longer going to be uh, significant for you in this new cycle. And there's going to be deep real realizations as it pertains to that. And then some of you are going to realize what does serve you and can continue to go with you in the future. There's going to be a lot of conceptions around this time. Lots of uh, souls will be conceived in the month of December, maybe more so than any other month this year thus far. So if you're not interested in pregnancy, you need to keep that in mind. And if you are, congratulations. Because there are a lot of masters with Empress, Justice, and Star that are going to be conceived in the month of December. They're going to use the energy of that portal in order to come down into the mother's womb. A lot of you as well could use this energy very similar to that of the New Year's resolutions. If, if you believe in that, I think any time is a great time to set a goal for, for yourself. It doesn't have to just be on New Year's. But many of you could literally, with devil and night, take pen to paper and write down your new goals, your ambitions, how you would like to see your life um, unfold and manifest in this new cycle. Because, you know, God, she's listening. She's going to be extra aware and attentive of us on that day. So anything which hasn't been working out, it's going to be made obvious to you. And you could be blocked in various ways from continuing to engage with that. 
but then there will also be opportunities presented to you that are going to show you your abundance. So it's not all necessarily going to happen on the 21st, but the energy is initiated at that time. So over the weeks and months to come, it will become more abundantly clear to you what you can do in order to increase your abundance and prosperity in all ways. Many of you, um, it would be well that you don't do too much on that day because the Queen of Wands here, she's a holy woman. So it's important that you don't do too much on that day, that you're very meditative and peaceful and that you do the rituals of your spiritual beliefs or of your private beliefs that help you to release and let go, but also to welcome and bring in. Okay, so that's the advice for the 21st. I love you too, hun. <laughs> oh, 2030 is deep. But my my main focus has been on the study of 2024. Because 2024 is going to be one of the most pivotal years in the history of humanity. What else, guys? What else can I read on you or read for you? Just let me know what's going on because this is for you. So let me know how I can help, what I can shuffle into. You're welcome. Love to you guys. Goddess, what do you have to say about education, career, and finance? Be at peace. Be at peace. Have faith and confidence in the direction that you're going. The energy of Aquarius is here with the Queen of Swords and the Star. That's forward thinking, optimism, and also selfishness. So Aquarians get a bad rap for that. They're seen as unemotional, selfish, etc., right? But in the grander scheme of things, if you observe their energy... They're very, very good at self-care. They're very good at making decisions that are going to serve them with longevity. And I think that is what's going to help you. Going in the direction of what brings you peace. Going in the direction of what serves you. Because it's through coming into peace and confidence, through planning for your future, that you will overcome the Seven of Swords energy. The Seven of Swords energy, it is chaotic. You have thoughts coming from everywhere, unable to make decisions, not sure which direction to go. But the thing about this energy, contrary to the Nine of Swords, is that it's really just surface level. It's not anything that's actually internal. And usually nine times out of ten, especially with the way the goddess here is holding the sword, you know what to do, but you have all of this background influence that keeps you from taking off with your plans or makes you feel like your expectations won't be realized. But in actuality, if you go with what you know, because you really do know, whatever that means for you, I, I don't know. Maybe it's choosing um, to take a year off from school or choosing to change your major Maybe it's deciding to start up that business or, or um, go off into a new career field. Humbling yourself and taking that part-time job, even though you have all of that education. Doing what you need to do so that you can better yourself. 
not really caring so much about other people's opinions, societal expectations or beliefs, but focusing that energy and harnessing it in such a way that it allows you to move forward and make abundant plans for yourself. Also, the Seven of Swords talks about the planetary transits. So it would be very wise for you guys to check out your current transiting energy and to see what type of conversations are happening, to see where the transiting energies, which houses they're in, because that's going to help you also to understand a lot of what you're going through. For some of you, this energy is not so much um, circumstances or conditions that you've created for yourself as much as it's how the energies are interacting with your natal chart. So some of you are going through intense lessons with the Queen of Swords that's going to help you to better manage your finances, to make better decisions, or to go into a career path that's more suitable for you, be it through study or actually going into a new career. So there's a lot of lessons going on now so that when you come into some type of um, future energies that are going to develop like maybe years in advance with the way these cards lay you will be able to know what to do with it for example you will never appreciate your health if you don't know what it's like to be sick you will never learn financial literacy if you don't deal with financial issues you can have the best parents in the world and they teach you everything about money and how to have a good relationship with money but if you don't actually make or take advantage of what they taught you, you'll have certain life lessons that will teach you. So this is that energy, okay? Life lessons that are coming in order to help you uh, better maximize future potentials, okay? I'm going to bring out my deck and put this deck for a rest because we've been reading a lot into it. So I don't want the uh, readings to get repetitive. So this is my deck. For those of you who have purchased this deck, you'll have tracking numbers on Friday the 11th, which is a few days from now. Just bear with me because we're shipping to over 24 countries and it's just a lot going on but you'll have your deck soon. Thank you for everyone who's purchased. That's quite normal with this eclipse energy, Nina Jade. And you're still under the influence of the eclipse energy, so be gentle with yourself. Some of you have the idea to take a creative project and uh, monetize it as well as take it to the public. The only thing that can stop you is your own lack of self-belief. Because whatever this is, when you introduce it to the public, it will be well received. This is the energy of soul contracts as well. So whatever you're feeling encouraged to do, there are people who are waiting for you. <clears throat> Tess. <laughs> That's that's between me and Tess, guys. <laughs> there are people who are waiting for you, who you promised to help before you were born. You said, when I'm down there, we're going to meet up and I'm going to help you get through this. And they're also going to bless you as well. So there's a whole community that's waiting for you. For some of you, this is mostly having to do with social media. So if you're feeling inspired to start that YouTube channel, do it. Tell me what it is so I can shout you out to my subscribers. Okay? Um, if it's that Instagram, you need to do it. All right? Uh, some of you feel like there's an issue with oversaturation. Some of you don't want to deal with the haters that come with this type of thing. But that is not good enough for you not to do it. And it's not oversaturated. If you feel called to do something, that's God speaking into your life. 
So don't believe when people tell you, oh, there are too many of something or everybody's doing this now. Those are people, complainers, who don't have the courage to go after their own dreams. So they'll focus on everything negative in order to keep you from going after yours. Don't believe it. It's a lie. Don't let them speak that into your life. Don't let them speak that into your life. You have within you all of the knowledge, abilities, and capabilities to do it. You only have to start. It doesn't have to be so perfectly planned out. You don't have to have the best equipment, the best of this and that. It will come. If you only begin, everything you need will come to you. But there are people, a whole community of them, who are waiting for you, who need what it is that you have to offer. For some of you, it's dealing with spirituality. Others of you, it's marketing your businesses or whatever you have expertise in. For others of you, it has to deal with your art and your creativity. Others of you are beauty gurus, fashion experts. Please, the the collective needs what you have to offer. Don't delay. And if you ever just want to vent or you're having difficulty dealing with the haters or anything like that, know that I've been there and I will be here to talk to you if you want someone to talk to. I will make time for you. There are people in this live chat who will tell you that I'm speaking the truth. I'm really busy all the time, but I mean, that's by choice. I like to not be bored. But, you know, I will be there for you if you need to vent or talk. Please do not let that low vibrational, low level energy or the fear or anxiety stop you because it's a lie, okay? It's not based in reality, it's, a, it's an illusion. So don't, don't fall into that, okay? So that's it, guys. They're telling me to stop. Whatever these creative projects are, please do it. You have support. It may not look like it, but you do. Because I'm sitting here right now saying, I will support you. I will reply to your direct message. I will shout out your channel or your Instagram or whatever it is that you have going on. Okay? Now, I want to get that colloidal silver for you, but I don't want you guys to just be sitting here like that so just give me one second to go and get it and I'll be right back Okay, guys, so shout out to Soul Family and the amazingness of connecting with souls that you spent eons of lifetimes with. I love you guys very much. You guys know who you are if you're watching or if you watch in the future. But here's what it's called Orca's Island Colloidal Silver. It is amazing. If you like the brand Sovereign Silver, which is the mainstream brand, this is 50,000 times better than that. Okay, it contains 90% ionic silver, 10% colloidal silver, distilled water, and it's at 20 ppm. For more information, please visit this. Let's see if I can bring it into focus for you. It's Orcas Island colloidalsilver.com there we go yes okay there's the website the owners of this are amazing people they're very deep spiritualist um, it's the only time I've read a chart for a couple and I really believed in twin flames because of what I saw in their chart 
and the work that they're doing together is really phenomenal. And um, this taking this has been literally life saving for me. Sorry, I uh, wasn't able to bring it into focus so well, but I will write it in the live chat for you guys. It helped me so much. I want you guys to do your research on colloidal silver. You're going to read a lot of stuff online from the medical establishment, which is going to say, no, no, no. But if you go onto Amazon and you look at the, um, if you look at the uh, verified reviews from different brands of colloidal silver, you will read story after story of how it has been life-saving for people. And I am one of those people. And just to have dear subscribers who would send me a whole case of it just like really touched my heart. And now I want to share it with you. So what I do is I take um, enough to fit underneath my tongue. So maybe a teaspoon or two. And I hold it under my tongue for 30 seconds. And then I swallow it. And then uh, where I was affected with cancer, I would also use it there, like topically. And it helped me tremendously. I even, my, my <laughs> listen, my oncologist was like, no, don't take it. And then I started taking it. And my results started coming back in such a way that it made him a believer. And he's totally against holistic medicine, but it made him a believer. So I'm just sharing that with you, but I'm not a medical doctor. And you should take anything I say medically with a grain of salt. And I just want you guys to, um, I just wanted to share something that was really good for me because I hope it can help you too. Yes, I have used it um, because I, uh, I used my sister's mascara. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I used my sister's mascara and I got like a little eye infection and I dropped it with the eyedropper in my eyes for three days and it completely disappeared. Okay, so I wanted to share that with you because I just I just want to share goodness. So I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here with me this morning. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to practice karma yoga. And I will be back soon. And I wish you so much love. Hey, Nikki, how you doing? Hey, H. I wish you guys so much love. I pray peace and abundance for you. I wish health for your family, health for your loved ones. I pray for your protection from enemies. I pray for your sanity, your mental health, your emotional health. May God bless you in all of her glory. Whatever your beliefs are, may you be blessed. And I can't wait to read for you guys again in the future. I love you very much. Till we meet again, I wish you guys all the best. Ashe.